Your turn. You roll a six, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you ready for another quickie? Yes, this is uh, uh, yes or no, five seconds. Uh, would people be lazy? If the basic necessities of life were made available to everyone, would people be lazy and not want to work? Ready, go. No, no, that's right. You see, that's another one of those reactions people have when they hear a little bit about the resource-based economy. They'll say, no, that won't work. People are lazy. That's just the way they are. It's human nature. So are people born that way or made that way by the system into which they're born? Some kid from a family who's poor, uneducated, sees how the other half lives and from an early age begins to believe that he's not worth as much. And it's hard to get out of that cycle of poverty when the odds are stacked against you. He won't get the same education that rich kids will. College is expensive. Oh, we don't just give away knowledge and education. No, you gotta pay for it. Wow, how sick is that fact right there, you know? A society that was just a little enlightened would be heaping knowledge and education on its young people and all people. Yeah, that, that would make sense. But in our system, oh, it's gonna cost you. And if the banks can get you into a student loan right there, oh, it'll continue to cost you year <laughs> after year. So that kid sees how money and connections will benefit some people. Some other kid might get into a prestigious university, not because of his good grades or accomplishments, but because his father went there and makes generous donations. So the rich kids will stay rich and the poor kids will stay poor most of the time and they'll end up doing yard work for the rich kids or some other job they can't stand. So when they're not working at that job, well, they'd rather sit around and be lazy. Okay, now imagine the same kid born into a world where he was truly equal. There wasn't the social classes, and he was told that he could see that he had just as much value as anyone else, and, and that his ideas were just as important as anyone's. That would be a completely different person and you begin to realize that human nature is really just behavior that is learned, behavior that results from our system. But some people will argue that it's man's nature to, to be greedy, to, to fight and take. Okay, I can give you a, a quick example here and it makes it easy to understand. A variation on uh, musical chairs. Let the music begin. Okay, now let's say we have three chairs at the table and three meals and three beds in the house, but we have four people. And sometime in the afternoon, the music that's been playing, it stops and they fight for those chairs. And whoever doesn't get one has to go outside for the night without a meal or a bed. And it's cold out there. And then he comes in the next morning, not in a good mood, and they do it again. And you can see how they build up grudges and distrust and animosity. And, and maybe one person is good at manipulating others. So he, he takes this person aside and tells him, hey, that guy over there is out to get you. And a little later, he takes the other person and says the, the same thing. Then when the music stops, he watches those guys fight it out while he casually takes a seat, unfolds his napkin. Yeah. So you see how people behave in this situation? In this system, when things are scarce, they fight, they scheme and plot for advantage and manipulate, yeah, like, like we do today. Now we'll put a fourth chair at that table and a fourth meal in bed. Then when the music stops, what do they do? They walk over to the table and they have a seat and eat their meal. And, talk about things they did today. Yeah, they get along, you see, there's no reason, there's no motivation to fight. And this is how people behave when there's an, an abundance. Yeah, so at this point in time, we can create enough for everybody with our technology doing most of the work. Yeah, it's, it's true. But we keep this monetary system going with its manipulated scarcity and 
we're living with all the problems that this behavior creates. And um, it's not working anymore, you know? It's not sustainable. We have to see that it doesn't have to remain this way. Even if it seems that that's the way it is, you know, and always will be, because our, our very identities seem to be tied in. Oh, no, no, there's that music again. Um, we have to take another quick break here for a word from our sponsor, but don't go away because we're almost finished. <laughs> Have you ever stopped to wonder about the kind of world we could create if we really put our minds to it? Can you picture all these people living life in peace? It seems so impossible. Your imagination just won't extend that far. Sure, it's cozy and comfortable and familiar inside that box, but what about that noise? keeps getting louder day after day, coming at you from every direction. You can't tune it out anymore. Maybe it's time to cut loose those chains and let your mind wander beyond the boundaries of our accepted traditions and conventional wisdom. I recently began taking extenders and almost immediately I could see the possibilities on the horizon. And in less than a week, I'd made it all the way up and over the edge of my established institutions. I'd extended the boundaries of my imagination beyond my wildest dreams, and I could now envision a world without the stock market and banks and war and greed. Everything in my life has become so much better. I'm relaxed and content. The stress is gone. My wife likes it too, and our time together has never been better. There's nothing in the box because it's all in your mind. For that special part of you that really needs to grow. Okay, back to our game. I'm sorry about that interruption. We have to stop everything for another sponsor. In the resource economy, we won't have to deal with sponsors. We won't have to listen to another sales pitch with someone trying to sell you a half-empty box to solve some problem that's mostly in your mind. Thank goodness, okay. My roll, okay, I got a four, one, two, three, four. And hey, this is the last one before the final two questions, and it is another... Contrast and compare. Oh, that's the pastor on helium, I think. Take it easy, pastor. Okay, now, this is a typical day in the life. We've got a mother and a father with two kids, preschool age. In 60 seconds, describe a typical day in the life of our family, first in the monetary system, then in the resource economy. Okay, 60 seconds. Now, uh, we can decide what the parents do for a living before we start this. So let's say he's a chemist, a chemical engineer, works for a pharmaceutical company, and she makes computer software but got laid off a year ago. So she, she just got another job, though, working for a bank. Yeah, credit card department, promotions. Okay. You ready? Okay. And go. Okay, so the alarm goes off at 6 in the morning, and they're up at dawn and racing around, and she gets to get some cereal, packs their Lunchables, and then she's off to pick up a couple more people. Her turn to drive in the carpool, 30 miles in rush hour traffic on the freeway. It slows to a crawl, and she shakes her head, and she looks at all these cars sitting there spewing exhaust. And meanwhile, uh, Dad drops the kids off at preschool, then drives 20 miles, uh, listens to the news, uh, more soldiers killed in the war, another oil spill, insider trading, you know, the same old stuff. So he gets to the lab uh, where he's been working on some kind of cell growth experiment, but one of his co-workers has stumbled onto a formula for a better boner pill. Yeah, and now every, everybody has to work on that. Not what he wants to be doing. Um, no, he's not happy with this, but he's lucky to have a job. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's in an office at the bank. She's on the phone to a customer, plowing through that sales pitch. Yeah, a new credit card offer with some low-interest features that could really benefit them. 
although she knows it won't, and they'll end up paying more in the long run, and she'd like to tell them the truth, but her call may be monitored for quality assurance. She hates doing this, but keeps reminding herself she's lucky to have a job. And now he's picking up the kids around 6 o'clock, and then they're picking up some bad habits at the preschool, and they're tired and whining, and he, he needs to be spending more time with them. He knows that, but those parents have to be working to make ends meet to pay those premiums, which keep going up. And anyway, Mom gets home an hour later, and they put some frozen dinners in the microwave. There's some housework to be done, and finances, yeah. You know, they usually try to get in some quality time with their kids before bed, but not tonight, because it's uh, it's almost April 15th, and they're still working on their taxes, and they need to go through their bills, and you got to pay some by tomorrow, or get hit with another late fee, so... Uh, uh, I couldn't quite make it there, could I? Almost. I mean, what's left? The kids fall asleep in front of the TV and they keep going till midnight uh, when they literally collapse into bed. Uh, no time or energy for any affection these days. No, they got to get up the next morning and get right back in the rat race. Wow. It's kind of depressing, isn't it? What we have to put ourselves through just to make it through the day playing this money game. And I think all of us can see the damage that's being done to people, to families, by the stress and arguments that r result from the game. Not having enough time for the things that really matter, not being able to raise your kids with the supervision and attention they need. And this leads to all these increasing social problems in our society, I know, okay. That's depressing. This is going to be a little better. I do believe it should be. 60 seconds. Come on, and go. Okay, so they get up in the morning when they've had all the sleep they need, which is usually around 8 o'clock. And they've got a little garden outside the back door where they pick some veggies for their omelet. And the kids are involved with making breakfast, fresh fruit. No waffles anymore. No frozen waffles. And mom takes the kids in the morning, and they walk a couple blocks to where they hop on the trolley, electric trolley. And there's very few cars on the road these days. They've gotten rid of theirs. They don't need them now. So it's just a couple miles out to the community gardens, and they spend a few hours there tending and planting and harvesting. And the kids are learning about how to grow food and the different areas where people have experiments and progress. So meanwhile, Dad is online with a big group of, of like-minded chemical engineers. He's back to working on this human cell regeneration project. And there are scientists from Europe and Africa and Asia and the Middle East all over the world who are connected and working together on this project and he finds this to be just fascinating. Uh, okay, so when the rest of the family returns with more food they just picked, they make lunch, he tells them about what's been going on in his group. But they tell him about some of the experiments he's doing at the gardens uh, and then after some quiet time he takes the kids and they walk a mile to, to this assisted living facility where he's been helping with some renovations uh, and there's a preschool down the block so the kids spend a couple hours there and when he comes to get him, he stays for a while and, you know, plays some, some games with the kids. And in the meantime, Mom's on the computer with her group and working on a software program. And, and she's still into it when they get back around 5 o'clock. And so they walk over to the park, Dad and the kids, and they, they get some more exercise. They join in a softball game. And it's not that kind of game where the parents yell at the umps and, and get in fights on the sidelines, you know, because that would just be stupid. Uh, so they go home now and they have dinner and, uh, uh, no, I know, I, I, again, I couldn't make it. Um, but can I just finish this day because, oh, I'm, I like it here. Yeah, I like, uh, like it a lot. And so just, just a few more seconds, let me finish the day, okay? Um, so, uh, Okay, it's almost dark, they, they have dinner, and then uh, this is their favorite part of the day. They're, they're working on this project where the dad has one of the kids and they're writing this children's story, and the mom has the other kid, and they're doing the music for it with this new software program that she's made. And they wrote this Zeitgeist Lullaby song and put it online, and, and other people have been listening to it and, and like it, and that, that makes them feel good uh, that they've created something that people like. And then the parents tuck them into bed and read them a story. And the kids are all excited, though, about the big holiday tomorrow because it's April 15th, oh, one of the biggest holidays in the land. When parents tell their kids about 
how they had to work at these jobs. They didn't really want to do that weren't relevant to anything. Just, to get this paper money and then give a lot of it to the government on this day. To, and a lot of that money would be wasted on this or that. And the kids say, wow, that sounds crazy. And the parents say, oh, let me tell you about it. And the kids say, no, no, that's, a, that's all right. We've heard enough. They say, yeah, anyway, there'll be festivities at the park tomorrow and games and, and a fun house. Uh, that could be a little scary, though, because it's, it's the free market fun house, a flash from the past. And yeah, you go in there and, and you get hit from every direction with late fees. And around every corner you're accosted by bill collectors. And there are, there are scary repo men at every window. And it's a little traumatic, you know. But they figure the kids should be exposed to this because they should know what we've been through and know that we never ever want to go back there again. And then when the kids go to sleep, then the parents still have a little time and energy for some affection, and then they get up the next day and, and do it again. Yeah. That's, that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes perfect sense to me. I mean, that's how we could be living. If everything wasn't so backwards and so senseless. Wow. Okay. Um, Hey, the finish line is finished lines.